So you're a masseuse? I am. What is it that you do? I'm a poet. <laughs> and I'm a dreamer. <laughs> no, really. I am. Oh, you're really a poet? Yeah. Oh. oh. <laughs> yeah. This is Albert. Hey. Hi. How's it going? You know, my friend Eva was just telling me that there is not one guy at this party that she's attracted what? to. What? It's okay. There's no one here I'm attracted to either. <laughs> All right. Great. Some guy you met at the party wants your number. Hi. Hi. Oh, did I get the day wrong? No. Why? Because you're wearing your pajamas? It's Sunday. I like to be comfortable. Oh, good. So sad look at you. Why? Come on, you know why. Because of James Gandolfini? Yeah. Hey, man, it's not like his last movie was G-Force or Street Fighter or, or, or Planes or anything like that. Yeah, that's true, man. But just this is a guy, I, I feel for him, because I always said, this man, he was trying so hard to get away from that Tony Soprano image. He was trying to seem like a nice guy when he wasn't choking people on the street or sure. slapping a fan at the airport, you know? And, and, my, and the mob got so mad that they put a hit on him, and he's yeah, gone yeah, forever he's gone, now. man, out there talking that shit, yeah. No, people, enough said is what we're talking about. This has been described as the swan song for old Jimmy G, man. Damn. <laughs> you know, I was friends with him. Like, oh, oh, yeah, yeah, you, you and the mob along with him. You were his buddy. Yeah, he, was, yeah, yeah, he actually slapped yeah. the shot of the last war graph. This movie should have been called Swan Song. Yeah. <laughs> but it is like that, man. The, the sad thing about it is that James Gandolfini really had been trying to take his career in a different direction. Sure. He wanted to be mm -hmm. sort of a gentler guy. Yeah. And this movie, he is that guy. Now, the other people in the movie, you've seen them before. One of the biggest is Julia Louise Dreyfus. And she plays a, a middle aged masseuse. And she's out there giving back rubs and stuff to all different kinds of people. But she meets this poet played by Catherine Keener. They become friends. Mm -hmm. Which party? Which she meets both of them. Yeah, well, I was, I was, about, I was about to get to the <laughs> yeah. Come on now. All right, all right. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. She meets her at a party. And they, they, they're, they're talking. They, they, they're they like, hey, let's be friends. And uh, as uh, Leon was so quick to tell you over here. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to get to the point. <laughs> at the same party, she meets this big old hefty guy named Albert, played by... Uh, what's James Gandolfini? <laughs> and, yeah, no, I'm all flustered. Uh, Tony Soprano. <laughs> Tony Soprano. And uh, this this guy and her, they they hit it off. They're doing just fine until she learns that oh shit, she's he he's the ex husband of the same woman that I became friends with at that same party. Oh. And it gets bad because. While she's getting along with this guy, she just can't help but sit back and listen to the shit that the ex-wife talks. Because women love to they, hear gossip. They love talking. Boy. See? See? Talking All that talk, 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 talk is going to get you in trouble. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's funny because she mentions it so casually early on. Like, yeah, I'm kind of dating this guy. I wasn't attracted to him at first, but I'm liking him. He's Everything's going good. Mm -hmm. I just I kind of wish I knew some dirt. I wish somebody I could talk to about him. Mm -hmm. But anyway, back with the film. <laughs> and then later talking to her friend about, you know, Captain Keena just talking shit about her ex-husband. Oh, yeah, he sounds bad. Oh, man. Yeah, good yeah, good he, thing he, you dumped that loser. I know, oh, yeah, I, I, what's his little... name? <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just little things, too. You know he does, that asshole. He likes to stick his chips in the guacamole and separate the onions from the rest of the guacamole. Who the fuck does yeah. that yeah. stupid and, and, shit? And I think at one point she says, and, and did I mention he's a big fat slob? Yeah, and he's fat. Yeah. <laughs> How dare he be fat? <laughs> and you know, I mean, I'm dating a fat guy too, but yeah. that, but, but for you, that's wrong. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and you know what? I mean, the cool thing about this movie is that it's okay. First of all, it's a romantic comedy. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the people, they, the industry likes to call those things the rom coms. Rom coms. Yeah. Sure. But it's, it's a romantic comedy. But it's a romantic comedy that both men and women can go to. Because when we see these mainstream Hollywood romantic comedies, the reason why we hate them, I speak for everybody in this room because I know you do too, they they exaggerate stuff for the comedy. Mm -hmm. and, and yeah, they like, a cheap laugh. Laugh. It's a fantasy film. People react. They, they do things that nobody would ever do in real life. Right. There's no real morality play going on. It's just like, yeah. oh, stop being an asshole. And just, yeah. Or just, just talk to this person. And they don't really talk. You they know. don't really it's, talk. It's yeah. always a bad script. Yeah. yeah. And in this movie, I think it's, the reason why I say I think it's great for men and women, because couples, they need to see this. They do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because what you realize here is that, listen, Nobody's perfect. There's always going to be something in a relationship. Somebody's going to do something that bothers you. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, it, like I said, you know, and, and you're going to do something that bothers them. But this movie says, 
Listen, you you let those things get to you as much as you allow them to. You can either look at all the bad sides of people and just let that add up, or you can go and look at the benefits of somebody else and say, all right, you know what? Compared to the good sides of this person, all that bad stuff, that's nothing. Or, or, just, or just accepting who the person is. That's what know? I'm saying. Yeah. Well, even more than that, the, 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 the movie is really saying to all the women out there, stop listening to your girlfriends because <laughs> yeah. oh, those bitches man. do not stop, have your Stop jibber-jabbering. <laughs> yeah, get off the fucking phone. Quit tweeting each other. Get off Facebook and Skype. Just shut the fuck up. Yeah. And you know what? This movie, I'm t- and man, you really need to go see this movie because you're going to have a good excuse to get home and tell you women at some point in your relationship shut the fuck up yeah. <laughs> i'm not being abusive no i'm not no. hurting you but really yeah. you hurting this relationship because you talk too fucking much this movie totally hates women and i stand by that <laughs> uh, yeah no this this it's this movie is, is it's very light but it's also feels you know it's it keeps you going and a lot of it is julia louise dreyfus Ju- uh, louis dreyfus actually louis dreyfus <laughs> uh, but she you know this is her movie and she's able to do so much with the way she delivers a line mm-hmm. or has a facial expression. It's like, man, she's like the like the queen of comedy. Just she was that. she was master. fantastic. Yeah, she she kept me laughing. And I can, honestly can't remember a, a Julia Louise Dreyfus movie that I actually remember. She you doesn't know, make that many movies. Yeah, right? well, this one this she's one was like deep right now. Yeah. of course Seinfeld. Oh well, of course and, you know and, Seinfeld is is definitely. And she's a sure, Saturday Night Live alumni too. Yeah. So you know she got he, she has her comedic timing down. I mean, yeah. she was from that era of Eddie Murphy. And Joe Piscopo now mm-hmm. that she's in her 50s I mean this is a woman who's go- I, I think that a lot of women you know this is what Hollywood does to you a lot of women when they're young and they go to Hollywood or they're in the business they concentrate on your looks they want you to sit up there and look pretty they, you know you might be quirky mm-hmm. but yeah. as you get older I think it's really a good skill for women to have to have that good com- comedic timing and, and it, that shows her intelligence well what they need is, is a good script writer I mean if, they, if this now, guy was out writing scripts for Julia Louise Dreyfus all the time then all her movies would be hits but I mean with this one she really does shine because she plays a character that yeah, I ain't no woman but hey, I can by, still by, I can by, still by relate I can still relate to let her let me ask you <laughs> who's to say that the script writer is a he oh oh well, oh. if it's not a he, then it oh, sure, is it sure, it ain't, it sure it ain't no she. <laughs> yeah. No, it is. It, it, the the, it, the director it, is Nicole Holofsener. 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 Okay, first thing she needs to do is change a goddamn that, name. Yeah, yeah. She needs to get married. So yeah, I can man. remember. Ellis yeah. Island dropped the ball on that one. Yeah. 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 She needs to get married to a guy named Smith or yeah. Brown or something. Or call, call her, or or give, her, give her a man's name. Yeah. <laughs> and the thing is, she's made movies you might not have heard of, but she's mm-hmm. made... Uh, and she, the movie she's made for some reason she works a lot with Ka- uh, Catherine Keener but really? she okay. works a lot in television Parks and Recreation some other well stuff. I salute her because yeah, yeah, yeah I mean she had a pretty damn solid script here I mean everyone was good in this movie that was the mm-hmm. thing yeah. every character had something to do in this movie and, and, and a lot of it is just uh, so damn funny I was laughing at everyone in this movie even the even the, the couple the, the the friends of Julia Louise oh, Dreyfus yeah, yeah Tony Collette and I don't remember the husband yeah the, well the husband had me laughing the whole time because you know <laughs> obviously his wife was on a on a total man hating streak <laughs> along along with her friend, and the husband's sitting there like going, "What the fuck did you just say?" <laughs> you know, what? I'm that sitting husband, right here. <laughs> that husband is funny, man. His name is Ben Falcone. Mm-hmm. He's married to Melissa McCarthy. Is he really? Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Wow. He's got Uh-oh. a real good sense of humor. Shit. You got to. <laughs> I wasn't even saying anything, man. Let's put that shit out of me. I'm glad you did. See, Leon is the villain. There you go. But, uh, yeah, he, He's making too much sense. <laughs> but, I mean, he was one of the few people that I liked. I know people love Bridesmaids, but when I saw him in Bridesmaids, I said, you know what? He's funny. Everybody else I'm not too crazy mm-hmm. about. But, man, yeah, all this, all the side characters were funny. Mm-hmm. But the person, I hate to keep coming back to him, is uh, is is James Gandolfini because you see James Gandolfini at his at his at his most gentlest man he oh, yeah. and, and at his most charming I'm sure they're attracted to you well I don't know they get massaged do they ever hit on you uh sometimes yep yeah. I can give you a massage sometime if you want I think I might like that but I would definitely hit on you well, it might be okay. Really? You want a kiss? Yeah. I mean, this is a guy who, through all the subtlety in his performance, you can see how this woman would find him sexy under that 
Well, I'm that big fat ass. <laughs> Come on, man. Oh, now you the villain. On, right? I know, right? <laughs> Took the trophy back. <laughs> hey, that guy was living a damn good life. Oh, no, you know, he's deceased, man. Why am I talking like that's that? That's called good living. Yeah, that's right. You laughing at a guy who's dead. I know, right? <laughs> yeah, at least this girl's alive that you laughing yeah. at right now. Well, I, I, I was like, wow, they actually made a movie about a real life living teddy bear. <laughs> I mean, they really he really did. is, man. You feel yeah. so bad for him. I mean, I'm not to say a whole lot, but, there, you know, as through any relationship, there are things that happen, and whatever happens in this relationship of theirs, you just feel so bad for the guy, mm-hmm. and he makes so many good points about. I mean, he's he is the rational one in this relationship because he's a man. Yes, that's right. Exactly. He knows when to get off that phone. And even shut that the fuck up. Even that woman who wrote it knew that. Yeah, <laughs> you know, it's funny because it, like at the heart of it, like like you know the whole plot, it's kind of like a, a, a what do you call it? a sitcom plot of like you know uh, what's her name uh, Julie Louise Dreyfus. Like at that point when she realizes, oh, this woman I've been hanging out with, been talking shit about her husband. Is the guy I'm dating, <laughs> you know? That's that's something you might see on Three's Company. Oh yeah, but they yeah. It, they they actually like they they pull you into it in a way where you don't really see it coming. It is a shock, and the way she handles it, you kind of like it's one of those where you are like, girl, you shouldn't do that, and I think that I wouldn't do that. Yeah, but it's not <laughs> out of the realm of possibility. Oh no. Well, mm-hmm. the, I mean, when they introduce that that element to the story. Of her, because I mean, that's in all the plot descriptions and everything. I didn't know anything about this movie. I just knew it was James. Yeah, me either. Phoenix's last movie. And I said, I got to see this. But when they introduced that part, I said, okay, here's where the movie's about to go downhill, introducing that Three's Company shit that you're talking about. Mm-hmm. It's sitcom plot right here. But they managed to somehow still keep that consistency of this yeah. being a somewhat uh, uh, above average movie. Man. It, it felt and, real. I mean, it honestly, to God, they felt kept, they kept real. It around it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and I mean, to, to the point that at that moment when she gets busted, which, and, and it doesn't happen in some kind of like French farce way, mm-hmm. but people running in and out of doors and her like, you know, switching costumes or anything. It just happens in a way like something like that would happen in real life. Mm-hmm. And you're just like, God damn, man, it sucks getting busted <laughs> to where you got no way to lock your way out of it. Mm-hmm. You just have to face the music. And people people are so disgusted, they don't even want to talk to you. Yeah. Like, I, uh, you felt the awkwardness oh, yeah. during that entire <laughs> scene. Yeah, it's it, no, it's a I, – I guess when, when, you, when you see this movie or if you see a trailer for it and you haven't seen it yet, you're going to think to yourself – all right, it's one of those little cute independent films. Mm-hmm. I'll wait for it to get on TV, Netflix, home video, something like that. And I can't begrudge you for doing so. But, I mean, I don't know. I, I would say that if you if you are that person that appreciates something that's – if you've seen enough romantic comedies that you complain about them, or if you complain about the mainstream in general, you owe it to yourself to go see something like this. It's not big. It's a quiet film. It, it is a movie that will probably come and go. But I, I would recommend this for a full price. And again, not a flashy full price, mm-hmm. but a nice, quiet, smart full price. Real yeah, quiet. I, I agree with everything you're saying. I mean, I still br- come in to it with with the high matinee because it is it is that kind of movie. Where, like you could watch it at home. Like there's nothing to really draw you out to the theater for it, unless you're going on a date. If you if you are dating a woman who likes romantic comedies, hey, this is the one to take her to because you'll actually enjoy it. You both get something out of it. Mm-hmm. You you have a discussion and you get to look at it on the drive home. And go, uh huh. Mm-hmm. That's what you now you see what I've been telling you mm-hmm. that that girl Bridget is not your friend. And then that's when she stops the car and says, "Let me out. Yeah. <laughs> Give me the fuck out of here now before I mace your ass. <laughs> you, can get out. you can get out, but I ain't stopping the car. <laughs> or mace your feet. Yes. You'll get a call back. After that. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, well, just just rating the the film on its merits alone. I mean, it's a full price for me as well. Uh, sure, if, if this was something I'd see like a commercial for on TV, I wouldn't think twice about seeing it. With the exception of just being a little curious about James Gandolfini's last performance, which you know, by far he is he is exceptional in this. He is great. I mean, you really yeah. do feel for his character a lot. You sympathize with him a lot. I mean, he's a he, him like the other characters are honest to God, real people. You know, mm-hmm. just how they deal with this situation. Um, but uh, but yeah, man. Th- but the thing is, this movie really did have me laughing throughout the whole thing. Yeah. I mean, there was never a moment where you know jokes were going so bad that you're like, okay, I guess, I guess this is the point where where the movie comes to a halt. No, that never did. Always kept me interested. Always always found it so entertaining. So yeah, do yourself a favor. Yeah, go go take your girl to go see this. I mean, I think you both get something out of it. Uh, you learned a thing or two. Uh, but I have to admit, though, watching it, you can't help 
but feel a little bad just knowing that this is the last time I'm really going to see James Gandolf do anything. And you I know, mean, yeah. I it, 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 the last time I felt that way in a theater is when I was watching Brandon Lee play the crow. Yeah, and I'm just glad they didn't have a death scene for him. <laughs> Never changed well, that, again. I feel in this as movie. bad as you, man. Yeah. I really was sad watching this, especially mm-hmm. when I saw how sweet he was. I really oh yeah, to see his career go in that direction. Mm-hmm. And but at the same time, man, I mean, if if he hadn't died, you would have thought like, okay, he needs to go to a doctor or something. I mean, we, we mm-hmm. talked about it on the podcast. Oh, before. I know. Well, yeah. that, I thought that in in killing him softly. Mm-hmm. The way he's breathing so hard—that's what I was gonna say. And yeah. Sweating, I was like, well, "Man, he don't look like he's long." Well, they—they they made they—they they brought that up in the movie. Oh, that's right. <laughs> I mean, yeah, they I mean, had brought up bringing and, that up. Yeah, I said, "Man, this fool is breathing hard." And, <laughs> and I said, "He does that in every movie." And apparently, yeah. on the set, he couldn't control it. Every mm-hmm. scene, he—you <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. know what? If he—he he was either gonna go. He was either going to go in that direction of being like a really gentle guy mm-hmm. or he was going to be Darth Vader. Because he's going to be in the Angry Birds version. <laughs> 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 I want the pig. <laughs> <laughs> Remember that new client of mine? Well, it turns out she is Albert's ex-wife. Stop seeing her, please. I don't have anybody I can bitch to. You can completely bitch to me. It was very clumsy in bed. Oh, my hair, my hair. Okay. Oh. He'd go on so many diets, and then he would cheat. Ain't that a kick in and he has no friends. I have lost all perspective. I've been listening to this woman say the worst things about the guy that I'm starting to really like. She's like a human trip advisor. Albert is not a hotel. If you could avoid staying at a bad one, wouldn't you? Oh, my God.